Good morning, folks. We've got a major area of focus today, climate and the oceans. The science told us nearly two decades ago the risk of disrupting polar ice. We're seeing no better outlook today as we begin at spaceweathernews.com and we find the last 24 hours on our star were mostly quiet. Coronal hole, northern extension, turning through while the brightness builds near the 10 o'clock position. Those are indeed the umbral magnetic fields of the incoming sunspots just behind the limb. By tomorrow, we should see the cresting of the group onto the Earth-facing disk. If the solar wind doesn't intensify a bit, we are at risk of a cosmic ray health alert today as the KP has dropped to the floor the last 12 hours. Eyes on the app notifications today in case we get it. Couple quick stories on climate before we dive into the sea. Just in case you were worried about the crop pest rung of the food chain ladder, it appears they are doing just fine under climate change, and pesticide companies rejoice to the chagrin of the rest of us. In a new analysis by Scafetta and team, they go next level on his long-touted planetary control paradigm. Here, it's finding a 60-year periodicity of meteorites, which implies a 60-year cycle of dust. 60-year oscillations are huge in the climate they have lacked an explanation thus far, and the space dust cycle appears to be driven by the orbits of Jupiter and Saturn. Okay, now pay very close attention to what I'm about to say, or rather, what one of the Earth's top journals is saying. The shutdown of the planet, halted industry, kept people at home and cars off the roads, and it raised the temperature of the planet. The more we shut down, the warmer it will get, and that's because not only is CO2 overstated in the models, which means cutting it during the shutdown meant virtually nothing on the cooling side, and in fact our aerosol emissions are what cool the planet. Uncertainties with aerosols sit in second place behind the cloud uncertainties in climate models, and maybe this real world scenario will finally end the disbelief. As you can imagine, half the country, half the world doesn't want to hear something like this. Some may have even had rebuttals saved on their phones, but they accidentally wiped them. So folks, let's go now to the oceans and remember that story from two days ago. We keep the ice at the poles, we keep our warm planet. We break the ice free and chill the oceans, we're going to get an ice age. That's how this planet works. The cold freshwater melt disrupts the currents that act as the heat transport engine all over the world, including Europe, which is north enough that they should wake up daily thanking the Gulf Stream they don't live under mountains of snow. We have been discussing how the evidence of the shutdown can already be seen in both that Gulf Stream and in the overturning circulation, and that's where we wind up article-wise today. New study shows one of the key items to expect as the heat transport begins to shut down. The exchange across the Atlantic should be affected, and while there is a freshening from the north, in the southern oceans, the shutdown begins to pile up salinity. Imagine that, right under the South Atlantic anomaly too. By the way, bit of salt in the water and it's much more attracted to electricity. This all indicates that the shutdown in the oceans has begun to even affect the southern Atlantic, a much broader range of effect than I'd have guessed, or further down the road than I'd have guessed. And folks, there is still absolutely no sign that Yale's cold climate bomb has been unleashed. If you haven't heard, the Beaufort Gyre has locked into cold freshwater accumulation phase for as long as it would usually enter it, release it, enter it again, and release it again. When it finally does release, a record amount of cold fresh water is going to pour into the Atlantic and threatens to derail the train entirely. Europe weather is one of the canaries in the coal mine as they will take a terrible cold from that shift before anyone else. We will also heavily rely on the summer and fall expeditions that went up there this year to tell us their data when those papers come out in the upcoming weeks. Woods Hole, that's you. Get on your horse, please. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got your wind maps and shots of our star to close, and of course, we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now, it's 5 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.